What are we going to be installing today? Well, today we're going to install the Ryko 2105 kit for the RMAX. Ryko makes uh, quite a few different kits for all different four-wheeler or side-by-sides. So today what we're going to install is the one for my RMAX. Now, this is everything that comes in the RMAX kit. I recommend that you, when you get it in your box, that you go ahead and you do an inventory just to make sure and you just look over so you get familiarized with what the kit entails okay now with that being said there is a nice instructions but i recommend that you download the instructions just due to the fact that if you have trouble seeing and stuff some of the installation pictures that they show can be a little cumbersome for your vision okay and a little confusing at times so you have everything basically telling you what is in the kit and then you have your instructions all through the kit like i said in the um, link down below you will have access to go ahead and download the said the instructions specifically for the you'll notice that i've already accessed most of this and the reason why is just to cut the time on the video and make it a little bit simpler when you go ahead and do this What you're going to be doing is taking all the screws out of here so that you can get to this panel popping out. You can take it completely out. The only reason mine is not is because my winch plate's right there and I really don't feel like going through it, but if I have to, I can. Always be mindful of your vent lines. You have three. You have the clear one over there and you have the two that are sitting right here. Okay. You can go ahead and pop this forward. It gives you enough ample room to look through so when you start routing your wiring and your wiring harness it'll be easier for you to do it now to access up where the brake reservoir because you are going to have to splice into this wire right here for your brake lights you have to go ahead and take out one up there one over here and one down there okay and then it just kind of pops you got to work with a little bit don't get too aggressive, but it will slide right on out. Okay, that's access so that you can get to the reservoir for the wire harness. Okay. Now, I have already accessed, took out the center console and everything, and then took out the two seats. Um, pop the panel back a little bit just for access to get that, but you don't have to remove it. And by taking out the cover plate here, you'll have a hex sitting right there. And then how this comes out is you pop this. Ooh, near my stone grill. You pop this up a little bit, and then it just slides forward. And you'll know on the panel that it has those little hooks. So when you put it back in, you just got to make sure that you slide it in there first into the groove. Slide it forward on both sides, and it'll pop right on in. Now, the reason for the tunnel to be out is so that you can run your wires all the way around back to the rear end. Now, when we get to that part, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But you will have to take your inside fender well out, which means if you've got the mud busters, you're going to have to take them out too. And then take all these panel screws out so that you can get in there to the back because you're going to be splicing into the wires. But you'll see that later. Step two of the instruction manual is basically going to tell you how to put the controller in. You're going to need a half inch and a seven eighths. That's why I use a step. And if you notice, I have the tape on there. It's just so they remind me to stop and not go further. You'll be putting in these, and you'll be putting in nose, and that bracket, and that switch. So when we get there, this is all you're going to be putting in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is locate the bracket. Just basically look around, see where you want it. If that's where you want it, that's where you're going to put it. Remember, you're drilling holes. Now, with that being said, I know I showed you with a step drill. Actually, on this one, I'm gonna to move to a half inch just because I can't remember exactly what is sitting within the immediate area. So, you can see, 
I pretty much got it lined up. So if you want up in there, you can pre-dot the holes with a punch or put a white pen or something that you know where to drill, okay? So the next step is showing you the after. Now you're getting ready to test fit, but you can go ahead and install the bracket. There are two little nuts that are sitting in there inside the switch that, um, well, they flop around there are a pain in the britches to get to. So when you're doing it, just lay it down and try to line it up that way and go ahead and tighten these down. But do not really gorilla tighten them. I mean, get them snug because if you notice with the bottom one, it's trying to pull the screw through. Top one's pretty much seated. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and come back up here and uh, we'll start getting ready. We'll temp install this for right now. And then from there, we'll be able to figure out where we're gonna put our hole over here. So now that you see where your switch is and you've got it lightly snugged up there, now you wanna find the exact hole you wanna come into. Well, one thing I use is that little bugger right there as my, where should I go ahead and blow my hole in? Now I'm gonna show you. So you see you got a nice open face, but you have to remember there is a steel plate sitting right about here. And you'll see that on the inside. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the light up here and we're gonna look from the front face in the back. And you'll see Hopefully, the shield, or the panel, is right there. And I know this lighting is pain in the britches. Maybe I can come from the other. Okay, now you can see it a little bit better. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Just bear with me. So, anyways, right down through here where my finger is, that is that side that we're showing you. Well, if you come in through there with the 7 8 hole, you'll have a nice comfortable access. Then you can go ahead and route your cables all the way back over here where they'll come out of that terminal or the cutout, okay? So next spot you'll see is after I drill the hole and pull it through. Now that you've went ahead and put these two back in, just run them down where they're snug, not over because what you can do is pull the rubber grommets the nut that's inside that squeezes out the rubber grommets, you can pull them out and then you're going to have fun. Okay. So then you're going to see she's sitting right here. She's stout and she's in and right there is where the cable goes in it. Okay. Now, ow, I got to move my back bit. Now you see where the cable comes in at. Now you can see where the cable comes up through. Now, the other thing is, when you do with your cables, be careful not to rip off any of your tags or you're gonna have fun trying to figure out exactly what it is, okay? Next stop, bring this all back up and continue on to. Now it's time to start connecting. We're gonna have the horn, we have the flash relay, and we have the wire and the horn communicating wire. And then we have that nice thing. There's a flash relay. This is for the brake. I'm sorry. Who is me? Okay. Now on to step three. We're going to go ahead and start installing our wonderful wires here. We have our flash relay. We have our brake. And we have the wire harness for the horn. Now this is just some of it. We still have all that over there to play with. Okay, one thing is, is you will read in there, no matter what, this has to be installed. Depending if you want the strobe feature or not, this has to be in there, okay? So just be mindful when you're reading in the planning, you'll see that they've yellow highlighted it and make sure. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna connect it and I'll give you a brief description. Okay. And you see how I got it wired coming right through there. You can come, if you're on like an R-Spec, since you don't have the turtle and speed switch, you can come through there if you want. Me, I just like to have everything centralized. So with that being said, here we are with the horn and power harness. Over here is the brake interface. And this one is for the flasher. 
Now these back here are for the rear and the front blinker lights and the indication. So we'll just put those right there for right now. Just lay it out for right now. And then you'll be able to start mapping it out when you get there. But when you do this, just kind of lay it out first. The nice thing is, is you can always run it, unplug it. You don't have to dike anything or none of that. So that makes it an advantage. All right. Okay. Now, what you're gonna notice is different with mine worth. <coughs> what you're gonna notice is different from my brake interface wiring. I did it my way. It's not the best, you know, no way it's better, yada, yada, and all that. But the reason why I did it is I'll explain it. Okay, so the wire harness comes back through this way, goes back down in here, and right through there, and you'll see in the pictures, is where the terminal is, or the connection plug, for the brake. Okay, that's where the pressure switch is for the brake lights. Now, I could have come and run the wire all the way down here. I don't like that. One, it's a chance of being exposed, not protected, another wire hanging, dangling, a red wire. It just doesn't look right. So, instead, I just ran it back up in here, and you'll see in the pictures, and I just ran it back through the way it should. Now, I know this still looks sloppy, but we'll see with the finished product, it looks a lot better. But the reason why I did that is I know that it's protected better in here. Now, the advantage for me is I have those, okay? I have them Mudbuster cover plates in there. If not, it's exposed anyways. But being as I put those in there, I wanted to make sure that this is nice and clean and not sloppy, okay? So, there we go. Okay, this is step five, the dash indicators. Now, I know we were talking about the horn and stuff, well, that was just the wiring, so we haven't forgot about Mr. Horn. That'll be step six. So, with this, the wires are marked right and left. So when you plug this and put this in, make sure that you put the right with the right and the left with the left, or you'll be pulling it apart. This part's a little bit tedious, but you can do it. You will need a 930 seconds drill bit. Again, another step drill bit taped off with 930 seconds. Okay, we've got the holes drilled for the light. Basically in a nutshell, I just came off of here and measured. Did the equal measurement there. Nothing set in here and nothing set in here. Your ignition is sitting right there. It's above your ignition, it's got a nice clearance. Okay, so next thing is, this is gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So this is where like if you have some safety wire, a real small set of mechanical fingers, something like that, that you can go ahead and pull the LEDs through because you're gonna be snaking them from up there all the way through here, all the way back here. Okay, so what you do is you run, get your cables already lined out, then you run your cable up underneath, you put your little bitty rubber stop or your little rubber holder right there and then you're gonna push your light through, okay? Be very gentle, they are LEDs, but they are wired pretty good, but just be careful, okay? So what I ended up, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna run, now this one up in there, snake it right up there, put the rubber grommet in, and then bring the light right to it. Okay, get your rubber grommet, put it in there, fight with it a little bit, but go ahead and get it in there. And now you're up there, okay? Just kind of get it a little bit flat, but don't try to overdo it or you'll break the wires at the back of the LED, okay? Okay, now that you've got your switch and your indicator lights on, you can go ahead and close up the back access panel. You can go ahead and put this back on. Just remember that the tangs right there, they come forward. 
Same for both sides, once you're in. Now step six, doing the horn. I've already laid out the wiring for the horn and everything, I already connected it because it was really simple. But you just follow your line, do with it what you want. And I ran it out like this, blew up the drain hole just a little bit, and then just basically followed all the way here and put my horn here. Now one thing I did do is I bent a about a 90 degree, a little less than 90 degree for the bracket to be installed. So the horn is installed. On to the next step. The next step is step seven. This is where we'll be putting in the front indicator lights or the front blinker lights. And you notice I have already taken off the rubber grommets for here. You will have to do these for all these. Okay, so you'll just basically, what you're gonna have to do is just peel these. Just be gentle. So basically what you're doing is you're gonna just peel it up with your finger, roll it off. And there you go. Your goal is, well, definitely want to put the sticker back on there. And the reason why is when you feed it through, then on the back where your hole is, this goes through. You'll see. But I just, this is a pre thing that you need to do. I've already pre drilled the holes, didn't think about it. But what I did is from here over to this one measured it's four inches and then just kind of worked it away it'll tell you the spacing the best spacing is anywhere from an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half plus you have to be careful of the bracket behind it um so what i've done is got it there whoops okay so i'm there there and there and i just basically made it follow the contour of the way the angle is Okay, when you're making your holes, you'll remember part in the uh, instruction is telling you to be careful of the ridge that sits there, the support ridge on the back. Well, it's approximately about almost four inches. It actually sits right about here. So when you're cutting your hole, you might have a shot of hitting it. And if you do, if you got a Dremel, just go in there at an angle with a grinder and just grind it down a little bit. I don't have a real good way of showing you, but that's what happened with me on this one. I remember when I did the last one, I moved it. It was actually over just about a quarter inch, but I didn't like how the way the seating was on those. So anyways, if you do get to it and you do end up hitting the ridge, don't worry. If you can get a Dremel, get in there or a rat tail file or something and just kind of get it ground down enough to where this, the rubber steel will go in there and seat properly. Okay, now if you're going ahead and you're starting to get these all in here and you got big old digits, this might help you be able to get the cable. What I've done, or the light in. So what I've done is I've taken some safety wire and just going ahead and pull it there. If you've got some good strong string, you can do it that way. So I'm gonna put you down a little bit, Let's see what angle we get you at. You just kind of pull it around. We'll keep in pressure and that'll help pull it right through. There you go. Quick little easy way, if you get a problem, just kind of use that to help pull it through because you might not be able to get your hand back there enough to uh, push it all the way through. All right. Okay, now we'll put the grommets in. So what I do is I just spray a little bit of soap and water action on there. And then what you want to do is you want to go past the lights. The other thing is, is while using a step drill bit, you're going to run into a problem and realize it, that the hole says, or the hole that it says that it's going to cut is a three quarter inch problem is it's actually less it's actually I don't know how much but it is it's it's a pain so you go in there so then come back over here after you got all your grommets down spray them again I'll you to 
use something. You can use WD-40, what have you, and just get them in there. Press them around. Just get them in there seated. Okay. And I know the lighting's probably not the best. It doesn't look like it is. But there you go. Okay. Now, make sure, and then double check, make sure that they are like this instead of not rolled up. So you'll have a problem trying to push the lights in. Okay. And that. A little more. Now, on top of these lights, it says top. So you'll have to spin to where the top is there. Okay. And you just press it in. Grab the next one. Look for top. It's kind of hard when your hands are all soapy. Okay. So. This is the one that had that lip. And then you come back here, find top again. And boom. And they pop. Okay, we got the wires ran. And you're going to notice something in a second. Got them up through here. I had to blow the hole and kind of redo my work. But that's the cool thing. I'm not going to sit here and not lie to you about. Oh, this went perfect. It's a learning experience. <laughs> so then I went ahead and connected. Now, the part in there that talks about where you want it, daylight, daytime running lights or um, whether or not you want it just a signal, this is the wires you deal with. I'm not gonna do it. I like just having the churn signal. Um, if you want, the instructions are pretty good. So just thought I'd share that part. Okay, I've ran the wires, got them all zipped up, kept them clean, but you're gonna notice I had to blow the hole up because I didn't, I had totally forgot about running these wires. It's part of it. Okay, so I just blew a little bit bigger hole up there. It's a drain hole anyways. But I will probably clean it up and put some, something in here a lot better just to keep it closed up and just drain a little bit. Anyways, enough about that. So I've got it snaked all the way around. And then I, of course, have all this spaghetti, but I'm not gonna go ahead and cinch all this up yet because I still got more work to do. But what I was gonna share with you is back here, if you wanted to go ahead and disable the running lights, this is the wires that you would deal with. There's the heat shrink it talks about. I personally am not going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and keep the daytime running lights on here. So, just thought I'd share that with you. Now on to the next step. Okay, when you want to do, to get the access to the lights, you are going to have to remove all these, remove this, take this out, take the fender well that's inside out so that you can get access behind here. You'll see the wires the way these are ran and the wires were ran over there. They're individually. But what you're gonna be doing, I'll show you in there, is you're gonna have to snake them up through that way because you are not gonna be able to split them and do a dual run like that, okay? Okay, the video on this part was screwed up. So anyways, in the short of it, you got two cables and both cables. One has female end and one has male ends at the end where they connect to the wires back at the lights. I used the female ends and the rest of this layout is how it went. It's gonna be hard one-handed, but to get those out, all you do is take and pop that little thing right there up. While you're doing it, simultaneously pull the wire gently back and then you'll have it clear, okay? So then uh, this is the wire that you will, per the instructions, take and face backwards and tape off. All right, we got the wires ran. They're kind of crudely ran up under there. I'd like to, later on down the road, I'm gonna reload, do something different with the wiring. But this is the wiring. You just come up in here and you re slide it in here, connect it to that one. Same on the other side, okay? 
Next thing will be is the tail light. Okay, the next thing we're going to be putting on is the license plate holder and the light. Now, North Carolina doesn't have small... Some guys have been lucky to get them, but mostly they give you regular car ones, so it's a lot bigger. This is, like I said, just to get you through to understand how this whole system will be laid out. Okay? Okay, now in the license plate light, you're going to have to put in these two little splice connectors. Remember black and black, and blue and red. Okay? And then you... I know this wire is still in the way. I'm just wanting to get us there so we can see what the lights actually look like. So then you just go ahead and do the normal slide it in and the groove. I don't have license plate light installed because I'm going to I want to do something completely different with it. So I just wanted to show you how the wires will go, where they go into the system. I know this is a mess. I know it's not buttoned up, but this is the one thing you want to do first before you button it all up is to make sure everything works. So just in case you have to tear stuff apart again, it's not that big of a concern or deal. Okay. Okay, what I do, one thing I wanted to show everybody is also, when you get these, and I know a lot of people don't like the piercers, I'm not fond of them, but what I do is I use hot glue to plug the holes where the wires come in, but before I close it up, I use dielectric grease in there, there's a nice glob of it on both sides, so that when the piercer close, it's encapsulated in dielectric grease so you don't get the helps prevent getting the green crusties and then on top of that I put dielectric grease down in here and then after I know the wire is completely where I know I'm not going to be unplugging it I might go ahead and just put the uh, hot glue right there okay that is another tip that I use for any time I use piercers I don't like it but if there is where I have to use it that's the one thing I do use so I'm gonna go ahead and close her up and then we'll see what the final product looks like. All right.